uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I want to start by thanking you for joining us uh, to this uh, uh, brief for the day. Um, but today, we are opening yet uh, another phase in this fight against this deadly disease. As you are aware, His Excellency the President, President Uhuru Kenyatta, yesterday made some very critical, some very critical pronouncements on the way forward. First, not to repeat, but just to highlight that um, movement in Isli, Nairobi, and Old Town Mombasa were lifted. And this uh, lift of the restrictions also applied to uh, Kwale and Kilifi counties. Now, it is important for us to clarify that um, these actions do not mean that um, the areas that um, were affected are now COVID free. It is simply because the observance of uh, what we have been saying in those areas and the isolation of the cases, of the many cases that were in those areas, um, have, have been having an effect. And consequently, um, the number of cases that we pick from there are less and no more than other areas. And that's why we said that um, uh, those areas, that's why the president ordered um, that action. But I repeat that it is not that the transmission of the virus in those areas has slowed down. And I want to appeal to the residents of the four areas not to become complacent and abandon all the containment measures. Any behavior to the contrary is likely to roll back the gains that have been made uh, so far. Let me reiterate that the directive that closed down bars that sell alcohol has also not been lifted because there has been those who have been saying that they are now free to start partaking of some of these things. Some of them even saying that they are now free to order uh, one cargo special. <laughs> I would like to clarify that that is not the case. And we have also noted that various facilities opening for business and selling alcohol are on the increase, particularly in some estates in Nairobi, in Westerns, in the Kilimani area. We have taken note. And I would like to propose to the owners of those places to quickly, very quickly, follow the directives that we have given. Otherwise, if you are caught um, selling alcohol, opening a bar, your license is likely to be withdrawn and for that matter withdrawn permanently without any possibility of reopening again. Fellow Kenyans, you will also recall that the President reviewed the dust to dawn curfew timings that have been in place for the last uh, several weeks. This again is to allow for both employers and employees to have a full day of work shift. We still continue to encourage those who can to work from home. And I think there is a good development here where some people have developed such a good way of working at home that is likely that that is how they are going to continue working even post COVID. So we would like to encourage the use of technology. Uh, we would like to encourage as many people as possible uh, to continue uh, working from home but in the event that, uh, for instance, you are in Kazi Kwamita and other areas that we have allowed, it means that you are able to take, uh, to give a bit more time to work, and hopefully that has an impact on the economy. On the economy, it will also allow those who are in marketplaces, provided that they are following the protocols, to be able to sell a bit more mamambogas and so on and so forth, to to increase a little bit the activities that they are doing. And it is important for us to reiterate that this is being done 
on the understanding that Kenyans are now aware, on the understanding that uh, we comprehend and we will be following these rules. Because the escalation or de-escalation of uh, the measures purely depend on what happens when we uh, loosen a little bit. It is that understanding that we are now we are we are we now have a partnership between uh, each other, between the government and its people, between the people themselves, in between families. It is the on the understanding that we understand uh, what is going on around our country, that we are able to make people take more responsibility, because the more we open up, the more responsibility is given to. Um, uh, to Kenyans themselves. So I want to emphasize uh, on the importance of individual responsibility in this fight. As we consider opening up more and more, it will be important that every person plays his or her role in the quest to limit the spread of the infections. It is now close to 90 days since our first case. And in that period, we are now better informed about our individual responsibility in this campaign. And I would like here to thank those in Nyumbakumis, particularly upcountry in the rural areas, who have taken serious, a very serious attitude about uh, new entrance into the community, a uh, new entrance into the counties, into the counties, and reporting any case, particularly the cases of individuals who have traveled from uh, epicenters of the disease such as Nairobi and uh, Mombasa, traveling up country. And I can tell you that um, they have taken it seriously. I want to thank the chiefs. I want to thank the sub-chiefs, chairman of Nyubakumi. You are doing a sterling job in informing the authorities and ensuring that you as a community speak to persons concerned and ask them to leave as quickly as possible. And that has been effective. And it is going to be even more effective when uh, we start uh, community uh, health care, uh, community care, and also more effective when we start quarantining in homes. Because it then becomes the responsibility of the Nyumbakumis, the responsibility of families, the responsibility of sub-chiefs to ensure that those who are self-quarantining do so. It's because there will be those who will do so very effectively and very efficiently, but we are also aware that there are Kenyans who will not do that. So I would like to, uh, to urge that that be the case. At the same time, uh, His Excellency the President directed that all counties must have at least a 300-bed facility for COVID-19. Now, this doesn't have to be one facility. It can be divided into several facilities, but add up to a minimum of that amount. Now, I would, I would also like to mention that this is a minimum. There are those counties who have already got a higher capacity uh, than this, Mombasa uh, being an example, that has already got uh, more than 300, uh, 300 beds, and you'd like to continue to urge that this be the case. In Nairobi, for example, most of the facilities we have been talking about have been a century Ministry of Health facilities, as in Bagathi and um, KU. We now want also to move to county Nairobi County facilities, including uh, Mamalusi Hospital, uh, and so on and so forth. So the Nairobi government, the Nairobi health uh, sector, is also being charged with the responsibility of ensuring that through the county uh, health facilities, we also build that capacity over and above the government referral uh, uh, system. So today, at our... Uh, National Emergency Response uh, Committee on Coronavirus, we proposed that uh, the 47 county emergency response committees are to meet very urgently. As you know, they are shared by the governors and the county commissioners um, that um, we urge them to take advantage of a two-week period. Within the next two weeks, we accelerate and ensure that the directive of the minimum 300 beds is, um, is achieved because it is very, very important that we do this. Otherwise, the extension in the time that the president gave, you know, will not mean much. So we must make sure, as you are aware, 
We have dispatched money to the county governments. Originally, they were struggling. We have dispatched money, and we will continue to, uh, to support. But I think that uh, the idea of them being ready is uh, crucial in the next phase of the management of this uh, disease. Um, and it becomes important because the numbers are not going down. The numbers are going up. In today, today for example, is our highest ever uh, report of 167 uh, positive cases in the country out of uh, some 2,833 samples tested. Now, it is also important for us to understand that this, this numbers, this high number, is also as a result of extremely targeted testing. When you look at um, the areas that these uh, numbers come from, you see, for instance, there is a huge number from truck drivers in Busia and the other border, border counties. Um, and, um, uh, for instance, uh, Nairobi has uh, 54, has 54 cases. Mombasa has 47 cases, while Busia has uh, 28 cases. Now, in the case of Busia, we realize that um, these are essentially truck drivers, but uh, we are also going to have a government direct intervention in the Busia County because of the rising numbers that, um, uh, that they have got there. But even the other counties are also um, increasing in numbers, including uh, counties like uh, Kiambu, now growing at 14 new cases, was in Gishu with uh, some 11, 11 cases. Um, there was in Gishu, the 11 cases come from uh, Soy. Soy has got five, Tabo three, um, and there is a case from uh, Capsaret, from cases. So each, each, it's spreading in the, in, in the county, in the counties. And this is why it is so critical that uh, we ensure that uh, counties begin to take responsibility. I think the test of uh, a devolved system is going to be now. Whether indeed devolution is going to work, whether indeed uh, health as a devolved function is what it should be, I think this is a good test. And uh, we are seeing mixed, mixed, uh, a, a, a mixed bag of uh, performances with some counties doing extremely well and others lagging very far behind. So it is important that we all put it all together and uh, we have uh, a general standard across the country so that each county has got sufficient uh, capacity. In gender terms, we still continue to observe that um, the male gender is taking a huge, a huge percentage of, um, of these things, of uh, these positives. Uh, I think more so because, for instance, when you look at truck drivers, you know, almost all of them are male. And therefore, today, we have got uh, a situation where 125 of the positive cases are male and 42 um, are female. Again, uh, the reason why we keep on saying that uh, those who are unwell, you know, must quarantine themselves is because when you think about it, uh, today, for instance, we have an 11 months, an 11 months old baby who has uh, turned um, uh, positive. In terms of discharges, today we have also discharged some 46 patients, which is a good number uh, for discharge, but I hope, I wish we were discharging as many as we are, as we are bringing in, um, which brings the number of recoveries now to 752. Uh, sadly, we also lost one person, uh, bringing the total um, of fatalities to 84. Fellow Kenyans, as we continue to combat COVID-19, I wish also to acknowledge the long-standing partnership between civil society, professional organizations, media, development partners, uh, with the Ministry of Health against fighting another case and another serious disease in our country, which is cancer. Today, we celebrate the National Cancer Survivors Day, an annual event held globally to honor cancer survivors and to show that indeed life after cancer diagnosis is possible and can be fruitful, rewarding, and inspiring. This day is an opportunity also 
to raise awareness about cancer and the importance of screening for early diagnosis. If we are to achieve better treatment outcomes and cancer survivorships, the key is early diagnosis. Our survivors prove that cancer is not all gloom and doom and that indeed we can overcome cancer if we avoid risk factors such as tobacco, excessive alcohol use, as well as seeking health care early enough. As we celebrate life, we will continue to engage in addressing the ongoing challenges of cancer survivorship to promote resources, research, and legislation that will improve cancer survivors' quality of life in line with the universal health coverage agenda. In conclusion, let me repeat my appeal. We must be vigilant. We can beat this virus through solidarity, cooperation of the measures that we have given. We must behave responsibly to shape the story of this pandemic. By doing so, we will leave no one behind. Uh, before I continue, I would like to invite uh, my colleague, um, Dr. Kuti, just say a few words. As you know, Dr. Kuti, Governor Kuti is the chairman of the Health Committee of the Council of Governors, Dr. Kuti. Thank you, Waziri. Uh, first, I would like to start by thanking His Excellency the President. Uh, and I think all Kenyans, we, we appreciate the agony the President is going through to balance the lives of his citizens vis-a-vis -vis the livelihoods of the same citizens. And I think the direction he gave is a balance to ensure that there's no explosion in terms of the way this disease will progress vis-a-vis -vis also some bit of activities in terms of allowing some level of economic activity, which is also a very, very important uh, part of managing the whole of this situation. Today we are at county 36. We have 36 counties which have now positive COVID cases in around the time when now we are 90 days into this disease. This means therefore, slowly and surely, this disease is permeating into the counties. Also, we are reaching a time when the decision has been arrived at for management of COVID cases at home after a certain period of management at government health facilities, which means more responsibilities are falling onto counties, more responsibilities are falling onto communities, and more responsibilities are falling into, onto families. And therefore, that much therefore prepared at the counties that we need to be. The directive about minimum of 300 isolation bed capacity hospitals or centers because we can convert institutions in the counties to be isolation centers. This, I think, should be taken very seriously. The county emergency response committees need to meet as soon as tomorrow and start planning for those facilities. And I think the larger the population in a county, the larger should be the bed capacity. And therefore, I think it is important that we step up at the counties. Our, we've been doing well. I, I appreciate the activities of counties. I appreciate the the leadership the governors have provided, but now that the disease is still increasing, today we are reporting 160 something positive 67 cases. And I think we are heading towards speaking. 
and therefore in few weeks these numbers surely will rise and therefore the numbers in the counties will rise i think our defense lies in the ability to strengthen the nyumbakumis as it has been stated but also community health volunteers i want to thank the work of community health volunteers who are really in the front line together with the nyumbakumis it is true we must identify people who have come into our villages and we must be able to isolate them and we must be able to test them but also once found positive i appreciate the effort of these community health workers the frontline team the nyumbakumis and also the health workers in the counties for really tracking down those contacts because tracking down contacts testing them isolating them before they spread the disease further is the key therefore i think we take home the fact that number one we have to bear now the responsibility much more it was in nairobi now it is in busia it is in isiolo it is in mandera wajia everywhere and therefore the baby is on the county's lap now and therefore we need to really rise to the occasion and i am i'm sure we are up to the task as governors as county governments and as health departments in the counties and uh, i think the other take home is the issue of testing i really seek uh, the indulgence of the ministry i know there is challenge and i think the main issue is testing if we test and get results quickly that much faster than we can manage the disease sometimes patients uh, or rather uh, suspected cases wait too long for the results and that part i'm we are already discussing with the ministry and I, I, have, I have information that we may be able to address this matter very soon, but I think uh, we, are, we need to be more prepared than before, and we need to face the fact that the disease is coming to us and in a bigger way. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Kuti. Um, uh, one more thing is, um, as uh, Dr. Kuti has alluded, and as we reported um, last week, I think this week, we are in the process of adopting new protocols that have been uh, issued by the World Health Organization, particularly those to do with the management, whether it's quarantining or whether it is um, uh, a release of uh, positive cases. Now, I would like to make it clear because um, I saw a report to the effect that uh, once we start doing that, then there will be explosion of the disease in homes. I would like to make it clear that the people who would be released, first and foremost, all positive cases will continue to be isolated. Let's start from there. All positive cases will must be isolated for a minimum period of uh, for a minimum period, as will be advised by WHO, and as we ourselves in the country also determine. WHO, for example, is talking about nine days. But we might also ourselves decide you know, to take to hedge that a little bit more and just to see whether we release people after 14 days um, or so. Because we have a lot of people who are in isolation. They have already gone over 14 days. They are still positive. And uh, the protocols that are being developed are such that those people apparently, and I'm going to ask Dr. Amos to speak to this, um, uh, do not transmit uh, the virus. So it is not that we are saying that positive cases from day one are going to be in people's homes. No, that's not what we are saying. Secondly, as, as, uh, as in regards to uh, the issue of um, uh, the new directives by the president, particularly uh, the 300 beds that we are looking for, as I said, some people have or some counties already have this, um, uh, have this capacity. Others need to bring it together to sort of move beds and so on together. And I would like also to urge that because we are not talking about treatment beds as such, the 300 is isolation, that we use a local Juakali produced beds. That way we create a lot of opportunities and we create a lot of jobs. 
I have seen, I mean, for instance, when I visited Machakos County, I saw that uh, their field hospital is filled with beds that have been made by the Juakali sector in that county. So I want to urge that um, even for the other counties, let's, let's, let's make use of our local production. At the same time, the use of masks, we are also going to be producing a large quantity uh, of masks. And we have also agreed that uh, the counties are going to get involved, especially the reusable, the reusable masks. Our uh, prayer on this one, on the reusable masks, is that reusable means that you can, you can watch the, 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 um, uh, the mask in the evening so that it is dry by the morning and then you use it again. You should not use it on day-to-day -day basis without cleaning it. That's why it's reusable. It's reusable if you wash it. If it is not washed, then you're not using it because um, uh, the cleanliness, hygiene, uh, when you've been breathing into something, then you need to make it clean. So just to highlight um, that one and the issue of uh, urging local production on the issue of masks, uh, spreading the, the tailoring of the masks as widely as uh, possible because KEBS has already given directives on this one. But on the issue of uh, home quarantine and home isolation care, I wanted to ask uh, Dr. Uh, Amos to address that particular issue. Maybe you can stand there. Thank you, Aziri. Thank you, Excellency Governor Kuti. Uh, the WHO, the World Health Organization, came up with new guidelines regarding home-based care and also how we discharge COVID positive patients from healthcare facilities. If I could start with the home-based care one, the home-based care is not a new intervention in the health arena. It has been used before. Remember during the advent of HIV, when our hospitals were swamped with cases, we quickly developed home-based care guidelines, which went a long way in relieving the stress of the public health facilities specifically and that we did with very good outcomes. So for home-based care for COVID-19 based on the WHO guidelines, which we are going to customize locally to suit our needs, one criteria is that you must have a COVID positive uh, report from the laboratory. Number two, you must be asymptomatic or you have a very mild form of the disease based on the triaging by the doctors and the clinicians. Number three is that you must have no coexisting comorbidity like high blood pressure, diabetes, chronic chest problem, chronic kidney problem, and the likes. Number four, you must have adequate space, preferably a separate room from the rest of the household members where you'll be able to stay during this place, during this uh, isolation or quarantine. This space must be well ventilated uh, so that uh, the risk of spread of the disease within the household is decreased. Then, of course, you must adhere strictly to the infection prevention control guidelines that we have continued to articulate here over and over again. The issue of wash washing hands, the use of the sanitizers, you must have a mask. The caregiver must also have a mask. We will propose that uh, no visitor would be allowed into that particular room where the person is isolated or quarantined, except the caregiver. Then you must, of course, have access to PPEs, like gloves. You must have access to maybe a thermometer to be able to check the temperature. Then working together with the healthcare, uh, uh, co community health volunteers and the other healthcare workers, within the vicinity, we'll have a plan for a referral in case your condition changes. So we must have an identified facility to which you can be quickly be referred uh, if you require further care. Of course, it is paramount that you continue if you are taking other medicines for any other reason, then you may need to continue to take those medications. Uh, you must also have a proper waste disposal system and a separate uh, linen and cutlery for use. 
so that as much as, po as possible, the time that you spend with the rest of the family outside that your space should be as much limited as possible. So those are some of the highlights that we'll put in place before we roll home-based care. So it means, therefore, based on these parameters, that not everybody will qualify for home-based care. Because if you don't meet some of these preconditions, then it means you can only go for institutional-based isolation or quarantine. Before we roll out of this, of course, we have to take the community health volunteers and the other health workers through a training or a sensitization process to ensure that when we implement this, the people who are being isolated or quarantined don't pose a risk to the rest of the family and the general public at large. So it'll take a bit of a few, a few days to maybe a week or two to be able to train the healthcare workers. The community health volunteers will be trained through an online module that is in place. So within the next three, four days, we shall have trained about 57,000 because it's just uploading that particular module. Then the rest of the healthcare workers who will provide oversight will also be brought on board. The other issue that came from the WHO in terms of guidelines is uh, our release of uh, COVID positive 19 patients from the clinical care pathway. Before, you remember, we used to keep people for 14 days, then we do the first test. If you turn negative, we do another one after 24 hours. But this test, in terms of PCR, it picks a particular part of the virus. But it cannot be able to discriminate whether this virus is infectious or not. So WHO reviewing the guidelines and reviewing data from other centers, and because we are dealing with more than 6 million cases of COVID-positive uh, infections in the world, we have sizable data to be able to infer from. Based on that, WHO now indicates that after the 10th ten day, even if you continue to secrete the virus, those are likely to be breakdown products of the virus that are not infectious. So in centers where even testing is not practical, therefore it means you could be released after 10 days. If you have been in isolation for 10 days, you don't exhibit any symptoms like cough, fever, or difficulty in breathing. You could be released to go home for home-based isolation and care. Again, under the same same program that I highlighted under the home-based care protocol. Then the final thing that came from the WHO is about the use of masks. And remember us in Kenya, we started, at, we gave an advisory that all people wear masks when they're in the public when they're in public places, which was against the WHO guidelines then. But now we have been vindicated because WHO has done research and has proven that in public places, use of masks or facial coverings can actually lead to a decrease in transmission of the infection. So it was a good, at that particular time, because we are facing a formidable enemy, of course you use any arsenal at your disposal to be able to protect your people. How good it is that now we have been vindicated as a country that we took this step. And probably this is one of the contributors to the numbers that we are seeing and the reason that our healthcare system has not been overwhelmed despite us heading to the 90th, 90th day of the infection. Remember more developed countries, the Italys of this world, US, Spain, were overwhelmed as early as 40th to the 50th day. So we will continue to preach these very basic me measures and we appeal to Kenyans, let's not tire. Very soon we'll be able to reach the peak, the cases will start going down and together we shall overcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Kwa hivyo, uh, vile tu ni kuongeza kidogo, kusema uh, vile mmesikia, tunajipanga, vile tutaanza uh, kuruhusu watu ambao wana virusi lakini ambao wameangaliwa na serikali na madaktari uh, na kuono ya kwamba hawawezi uh, kuenea hiyo virusi lakini vile daktari amesema ni lazima tushughulike sana na kujihathari vile vile ni lazima kufunza community health workers wale ambao watakuwa na shughulika na hii maneno na ni vizuri tufanya hivyo kwa sababu 
tunajua ya kwamba wale watu ambao watakuwa na shughulika na hii maneno sana ni kina mama ndio wako nyumbani ndio sasa wana watahangaika na hii e, na wale ambao watakuwa nyumbani kwa hivyo ni lazima tufikirie sana tusije tukatuma watu nyumbani ambao wana, wana virusi ambao inaweza inaweza kumbukiza wengine huko nyumbani hapo ni lazima tushunge na hatuwezi hatuwezi kutuma watu nyumbani tukijua ya kwamba wanaweza e, e, u, e, wataendelea kumbukiza hiyo hiyo virusi kwa hivyo ningeenda kusimamia hapo nisemeni asanteni sana na kama kuna mtu ana swali moja anaweza uliza The government had previously stated that uh, not all counties have isolation centers mm -hmm. and the bed capacity. I know you talked about the minimum bed capacity, but maybe you could tell us uh, how many counties so far do have those isolation centers and how many beds are actually in those counties. Uh, the second question is the protocol you're going to use to, to uh, determine uh, the, co the community health workers who are going to be chosen for the home-based care. Uh, thirdly, there's a... Um, there's the issue of bribery at roadblocks and uh, public gatherings that have been banned by the Ministry of Health but are still going on. So what does the government intend to do about that? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, first, on the issue of the isolation centers, there is not a single county that doesn't have some aspect of isolation centers. Um, it is a question of beefing up and ensuring that uh, they reach the, the, the number that um, we have proposed. As I said, there are some counties that already have more than uh, the 300 uh, bed, bed capacity that we are talking about. Uh, don't forget that uh, we are also going to use KMTC, Kenya Medical Training Colleges, as part of that process, as part of the isolation facilities that uh, we have where KMTCs exist. We are also urging institutions of higher learning, particularly those ones with individual cubicles, to also offer themselves to the county governments so that they can also be part of the process of um, um, of community community health care. Um, it is very clear, we have made it very clear that uh, we are not going to allow public gatherings. And I know that this is something that has been abused. It has been abused in Finos. It has been abused in uh, political gatherings. It has been abused in uh, pubs, in uh, weddings, and so on. And we are urging our citizens that please, this is not something that we want to start again uh, working on. As you know, what, what happens in these kind of circumstances is that we increase enforcement. And as soon as we increase enforcement, then there is an outcry that our police officers are uh, not uh, treating people well. So we want to do this from a mature, on a mature basis, and simply avoid gatherings as much as we can. And where there, where there is authority to do so, there are, you have seen, especially in, uh, in institutions of government, you can see the social distancing requirements and the masks are, are there. But as much as possible, especially in meetings, we have urged that people meet on um, have uh, virtual meetings. So yes, again, uh, gatherings are not allowed. We know that they have been happening, and we are urging our law enforcement not to take this sitting down and to enforce, uh, irrespective, to enforce no gatherings, irrespective of who is uh, called the gathering. There cannot be two rules, and uh, we are going forward to ensure that this is the case. Yes. From Citizen, uh, in the month of June alone, we are on date seven, and we have already recorded 805 cases. According to the ministry, is this the shaping of the worst month? And um, in Busia today, we've uh, been told there were lack of re reagents in Busia yet it is recording an uh, uh, increasing number. The caseload is really in, uh, on an increase and that samples are being taken to the MTRH. What is the ministry doing about the same? And of the 167 cases you've reported today, how many are from contact tracing? 
or are they new cases from uh, from uh, masters too? Thank you. Okay, it's a combination of both. It's a combination of both contact uh, tracing, uh, people in quarantine uh, facilities, and uh, as I said earlier, a lot of them also truck drivers on the border, on the border towns. As you know, those truck drivers are not supposed to be tested there. This is the, and, and I know that in today's NAC uh, meeting, it was actually emphasized that nobody should be allowed to take any cargo from KPA before they have a certificate. And this is going to be applied uh, by KPA, and uh, we got confirmation uh, today. It is going to be uh, uh, applied diligently. As I had mentioned last week, we know that there are some drivers who go in because they have a COVID-free certificate, drive the truck outside, and then give it to somebody who, is, uh, who, who may very well be, even as far as from Mombasa, COVID positive. This is what has been happening. And this is why you see this Busia, uh, Busia issue. Within the queues that you see there are also people with positive, with uh, negative certificates, but who are unable to move their vehicles because of the double parking by uh, people who, have, who are negative, who are, who are, who are positive, uh, who have got uh, certificates, they can't move because people who have not been tested are blocking them from moving. And that informs then the queue that you see there. We also have uh, circumstances where we are holding certificates for people who came, they tested, they are in the queue, but you can't even trace them because some of them just left the truck and then disappeared. You know, are waiting until uh, uh, the certificate is there. But when the certificate is there, they are not checking to come and and uh, and pick it up. And yes, we have had challenges of um, of reagents, like I have consistently said. But we have not failed the tests yet. We have not been so desperate as to not test at any uh, at any time. We have got shortages. We have got new reagents that have come in, even as we speak. So every day we are upping our game in terms of the, the people that we are testing. Today, it was up to 2,800, the people over, over 2,800. But uh, the issue of reagents is a global challenge across the world. And uh, we will continue to try and beef up, not just um, the quantity of reagents that we are getting, and we think that this is something that hopefully we resolve uh, in the next few days, but um, it is also the question of where to test. And we also want to expand our testing capacity so that almost in every county one is able to carry out um, uh, to carry out tests um, on the issue of um, the eight did, what did you say about the 805 cases steve the day of june no 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 no, no, no. we are we are not our worst yet we haven't uh, hit the peak as yet we have reported uh, today 167 cases and we still think that going forward it is quite likely that we are going to get to a point where we are going to report even over 200 uh, cases per day. At, but as uh, the medical experts have also told us, is that as that is happening, we are also growing resistance. You know, we are also, the citizenry are also growing some resistance. So hopefully going forward, we are going to be getting cases, but who are not going to be uh, cases for hospitalization. The trend of the disease in this country has been such that the hospital cases are not as many as, say, would be in other, uh, in other countries. But this is only because we are maintaining and containing the cases here within the, uh, the urban areas, Mombasa, uh, Nairobi. We don't know whether this continues to be the case. If this disease now goes up country and spreads up country, particularly where there are more elderly, uh, uh, people and citizens up country. Um, so we hope, we hope if we follow these rules, if we strictly, you know, control ourselves, because it's a question of control. It's a question of each one of us controlling themselves. Even when you get the urge to go home or to travel, you're using a Kapanya route. If you can avoid it, if you can control yourself, you'll be assisting in making sure that we do not get explosions uh, up uh, up country. So Asanteni, thank you very much indeed.